Is God to blame for the evil things that take place in the world today? Being he is the creator of all, is he the one ultimately behind the creation of evil? In this new series by Stephen Frazier, the origin and author of evil, you will learn about the goodness of God, the judgment of God, the chastening of the Lord, as well as the creation of darkness. To order the fourth CD teaching series, call 888-542-2555 or order online at lofbc.org. Hello, I'm Stephen Fraser. Welcome to the Living the Life broadcast. This week, I am talking about idolatry, how to live free of idolatry. You know, when God created man in the very beginning, he created him to have absolute rule and authority over the creation. That the creation wasn't to rule mankind. And the way that was to work was God was to rule in our hearts. Well, thank God through Jesus Christ, God once again can rule in our hearts so that the creation doesn't rule over us. If there's an area in your life God's dealing with you and you're picking up on his conviction, man, that is a blessing from heaven that you're getting convicted. That means you're in tune with him. You're in tune with the God who wants to lead you into victory in life. You're in tune with him, which means what? Which means he can lead you. You can follow him. You know what he's saying. It feels good. Righteousness feels good. God feels good. Sin feels dirty. Sin is heavy and burdensome and oppressive. It has a moment of pleasure, but then robs you from the inside out. It'll stimulate your outside while draining you on the inside. And there's people there, I got to have that stimulation. And they're going after that outward stimulation. And it's draining them on the inside. And they're thinking, why, when I continue to pursue this thing, I feel, I feel more empty and more drained and more desperate than I was before. I'm, it's not filling me up. It's not fulfilling me. I'm getting more empty. Because you're draining yourself on the inside while stimulating yourself on the outside. It's a great deception. Yes. Now, you can't stop devils from knocking on the door. You know, demons will come and knock on your door in the form of what's called temptation. Temptations will come. Temptations will come. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It's when you open the door and say, ah, oh, you're home. And you welcome it in. That will begin to destroy your life. Are you with me? Now thank God we can go before the Lord. And we can we say, Lord forgive me. I have allowed a demon into my life. Father God forgive me in the name of Jesus. And we can bow the knee and say I thank you Jesus. You bore my sins in your own body. You took all that demonic activity into your own body on that tree so that I could be free of it, that I could be forgiven and cleansed of it, that I could be righteous in your sight. And I thank you right now. I repent of that. I lay it aside. I turn from it now in the name of Jesus. Thank God he'll forgive you. And he won't just forgive you, but he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll, he'll heal you. He'll drive that thing out of your life. And you just need to receive that from God and renounce the devil. Renounce the hidden things of darkness. Renounce it. And say, no, 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 no. I was once blinded in that area, but I'm not blinded anymore. Uh-uh, no more. No more of that in my life. No more of that in my life. And we put up a wall around those kind of things to keep those evils out. Are you with me? To keep those evil things out of our life. And then we'll find that walls that the enemy has put up to try to keep God and his things out of our life will come down. Did you get that? We lay aside the evil things. We put up a wall of faith to say no more. We have resolved in our heart. Ain't going there anymore. Ain't tuning into that anymore. Ain't partaking of that anymore. The moment you do that and you put a wall up to that thing, it knocks down the wall. 
that the enemy has put up to keep you out of what God has for you. And more of God, more of God's goodness will come in and flood that area of your life. God will fill all those empty places in your life. Somebody's going to fill them. And it might as well be God. Oh, yeah, you know, you remember Jesus said, he said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it goes through dry and waterless places seeking rest. This is what Jesus said about demons. He said, when an unclean demon comes out of a man, it goes through dry and waterless places seeking rest and findeth none. And so then he says to himself, I will go back to the house from which I have come. And on the way back, he takes with him seven other demons. More wicked than himself. This, this story amazes me. That Jesus, you know, he's telling us, this really goes on, that there are demons that actually go through dry and water places. When they come out of somebody, they're driven out. And then they take seven other demons, more wicked than themselves, to try to overcome that person to get back in. And then they come back and they find that house swept and empty. Jesus said. The unclean spirit goes out, takes seven more demons, well, we, comes back, and he finds the house clean, swept, and empty. Empty. And so what happens? Jesus said the last state of that man is worse than the first. Notice they came back, and they were able to get back in. So the man had cleaned up his act. He had gotten, he had gotten set free of that devil. Oh, it felt so good to be free. But then he didn't fill himself. He didn't fill himself with God. He didn't let God fill that void in his life. How many people have you met that had all the best intentions in the world? I'm going to live right. We're going to live straight. We're going to do it. We're going to get it right, Margaret. And they draw the line in the sand, and they get control of their finances, and they start to take control of their life, and they start getting their house swept. They start getting things cleaned up. And the next thing you know, wham, seven more demons, more wicked come, and whack. Next thing you look, those folks are in worse shape than they were before. What happened? It's exactly what Jesus said would happen. What's the answer? Be filled. Be filled with the life of God. Don't just sweep your life up. Don't just clean your life up. Don't just clean your act up. But fill your life up with God. Let him come in and fill those areas. In other words, you're turning to him. You're not just turning away from stuff, but you're turning to him. You're turning from stuff to him. And when you do, he will fill those areas in your life. And the devils will come back. But when they come back and knock, Jesus will answer the door. Amen. And I just like going through life. I go through my day with a no vacancy sign. <laughs> flashing. I'm not like Motel 6. I don't keep the light on for demons. I got that red light flashing. No vacancy. It's neon. So on real dark, evil nights, the devil can see it. He says, oh, no vacancy there. Doesn't matter if he comes back with 14 more demons more wicked. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Oh, thank God he's in me. Is he in you? Is he in you? Well, thank God we can be born again and have him in our spirit, but then we want to go on and be filled with the spirit, have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which means we're submerged in him. We're submerged in him. I mean just baptized in them. That's what the word baptized means. It means to submerge. It doesn't mean to sprinkle. In the name of the Padre, the Son, the Inquisitor, the Nation. <laughs> Pour a little water on the forehead. You can't baptize a baby. It would drown to death. It's just, I'm sorry. It's just messed up. <laughs> baptized means to be submerged, man. Woof. You need to be submerged. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Fill, and the Bible talks about be, be, being filled. Continuously being filled with the Spirit. So there's, there's no vacancy for anything else. 
So we're turning from stuff and more of him. We're turning from stuff, more of him. We're turning from stuff, more of him. And he fulfills. He satisfies. He's the one that causes us to always triumph and to always win. We don't want to put up walls to God. If we hear, listen, if we harden our heart, it's like putting up a wall. It locks God out. And we can claim promises and we can talk all the talk and we can act spiritual and everything else. But if we got these walls, we're going to go without some stuff. We're going to be robbed. How many people like being robbed? How many people being robbed is a terrible thing? I mean, people that have been robbed, had their homes breaking into, I mean, they feel violated. You know, I mean, if you just left your car out there unlocked and you found out some folks broke into it or they got into it and took some CDs or what have you, and maybe some of your CDs would be best that they took. In fact, if they're a thief and they took your CDs, they are probably CDs that you could live without. Why would you want the same CD that a thief wants? What do you have in common with a thief? Shall we talk? Interesting. But, you know, they didn't touch you. I mean, you were sleeping when it happened, but the next morning you find out about it. Oh, what kind of feeling does that make? How does that make you feel? It makes you feel violated. Violated. Somebody touched you. They, 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 they deceived you. They stole something from you. It's a terrible feeling. It's a terrible feeling. Well, there's a lot of folks just living life with these kind of terrible feelings. Feeling violated all the time. And, and they aren't even aware of it. There's another whole life of liberty and freedom for them to experience. But it starts when we start putting the idols away. We start taking those things and say, listen, you aren't that good. If the Lord don't like you, I don't like you. That's just got to be our attitude. If the Lord don't like you, I don't like you. Talking about idols. Talking about things. If the Lord don't like it, I don't like it. It's not, well, the Lord doesn't like it, but I really do. You just made yourself contrary to him. You've just set yourself against the Lord. You've made yourself an adversary to the Lord. He said you're either for me or you're against me. You're either with me or you're against me. You're either gathering with me or you're scattering. I mean, that, that's how it is with the Lord. You're taking sides against him. How many people know, not good idea, take side against him. Why? He always triumph. He always win. You will lose because you're taking sides with a loser. The devil, who's already defeated. Come on. The devil is already defeated. Why are you taking his side? So if you know the Lord doesn't like it, sometimes you just got to stop. You know, if you want to renew your mind, just think. Sometimes renewing your mind, just, it's just a matter of just thinking. Just take some time and think and just think, are they doing this in heaven? Sometimes we don't want to think. But if you want to be free, then you want to think. So we sit back and we, we think. I wonder if they're laughing at that in heaven. I wonder if Jesus is saying, get more butter for the popcorn. I really like this part. It's really demonic. Sometimes we just got to ask ourselves the question, would the Lord enjoy sitting with us in this situation? Would the Lord enjoy being a partaker with us in this situation? And if we're honest and we recognize it's no, then what do we say? No, I don't want anything to do with that. Why? The Lord don't want it. If the Lord don't like it, I don't like it. The moment I find out the Lord don't like something, I immediately don't like it. Immediately, if, if the Lord, I said, I don't like it. Liking stuff is a choice. You decide what you set your affections on. You decide what you're going to like and what you're not going to like. There's things, there's feelings, there's things that come, and you can make the decision, I'm going to like this. I'm going to, oh, I really like this. But you could just as easily turn around and say, I really detest that. Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You'll either love the one and hate the other, or you'll hate the one and love the other. 
That's what he said. You can't serve two masters. So if he don't like it, I don't like it. He didn't make me contrary to him. He didn't make you contrary to him. Come on. He didn't build you in such a way that you would want things that he doesn't want. It's just the rebellion of sin, of Satan, that is here in this world, luring us, deceiving us, wooing us, telling us this is what we want, when it's really what they want. But it's not what we want, because we've been made in the image and likeness of God. When we got saved, we were created in the image of Him who saved us. Just like Jesus God did not make you contrary to himself. So if contrary things come to try to tell you this is what you want, you know right away, no way. That's the devil. That's not me. It feels like me. It's coming from my thoughts. It's, it's, in my, it's the devil. You've got to resist it like a disease. You've got to resist it like a sickness. Any kind of sickness, any kind of infirmity, you know, I've, I, I have renewed my mind and still renewing my mind concerning divine healing. And I know that I know that I know sickness and disease is never from God. It is a work of the devil. I am so beyond convinced of that, it's ridiculous. So if any kind of symptom comes into my body, I do not play with it. I tell it, you get out of here. In the name of Jesus. Jesus bore that. You have no authority in my body. I stand against it just as firm as that. And it can't stay. It can't stay. I've had all kinds of crazy things, but they haven't stayed. They can't stay. When you stand, stand firm in the name, name of Jesus, you stand firm in the name of Jesus. It's got to go. Well, you've got to treat other feelings and desires just like you would symptoms of infirmity, affliction, the same way. Because it is affliction. It's just packaged nicer. But it will drain you, it will rob you, and it will destroy you. It will seek to kill you. And you don't want to play with it. I don't want to play with anything that's of the devil. I said, I don't want to play with anything except the devil. I don't want to play. If I find out that devil, I'm not playing. Somebody say, I caught the cold. Why did you catch a cold? Drop it. <laughs> I mean, if somebody throws a cold at you, why would you go, got it? <laughs> Colds have to be caught. Don't catch anything the devil throws at you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever he throws at you, let it bounce right off you. And he'll look at you and say, why didn't you catch it? I don't want to. I don't like it. I ain't catching any of your stuff. And he'll fire stuff to you. you know? And a lot of people are like, they're reaching for it. They're reaching for it. I mean, the devil, he doesn't even throw a good pass. <laughs> He's got some slimy thing, and he throws it. It's like, terrible quarterback. <laughs> and you got people going, don't worry, I'll get it. I scored. Oh, you scored. <laughs> Don't be reaching for stuff like that. Are you with me? Yes. Devil throws it, just go, that's nice. <laughs> Some stuff will catch you by guard, and you come back on, hit you right in the chest. I'm not catching it. I'm not catching it. But man, Jesus, he leans back. <laughs> and you see him. Oh, yeah. I'm open, Jesus. Devil tries to jump in front of you. <laughs> it, listen, if you give the devil any kind of, there's no penalties. <laughs> the an listen, the angels don't see a thing. Come on. Angels are standing there. You see Jesus. And you go, I'm open, Lord. The devil tries to jump in front of you. And you just go, boom. 
I'm going to catch everything he's throwing my way. Come on. Let's catch everything. Come on. God's got good stuff for us. Why are folks winning in life? You said we always triumph and we always win. Because you're catching the wrong ball. And you're running the wrong way. Have you ever seen that? You ever see like a player, he gets like kind of, he gets things all turned around. And next thing you know, he starts running to the wrong end zone. And all the enemies, you know, the opposite team, they're just kind of jogging next to it. And he's thinking, you can't touch this. And they're like, yep, we don't want to. It's happened. And everybody in the fan, they're screaming, the other way, the other way. Then they get in the end zone, they start doing this. And it's like, everybody's looking. They're like, why isn't everybody happy? You just lost the game. Ding dong. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not winning. He said we always triumph and we always win. You're catching the wrong ball and you're running the wrong way. Repent. Turn. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get anything that tries to get up between you and him, where you are having a tough time seeing him, you know what to do. I've illustrated well enough. (laughs) Get what he has for you. Come on. Get what he has for you, and don't let any dirty, filthy hand rob you of God's best for your life. And I'm telling you, you are going to triumph, and you are going to win. Hallelujah. Come on, stand up and shout if you believe it. Woo. Glory to God. And friend, I got news for you. God is long-suffering. He is patient. And he is working with us. I said he's working with us. God's not sitting there with a hammer and saying, yeah, drop the ball for the last time. He's not saying you drop the ball for the last time. He's saying, just let's go. Let's get this thing right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Come on. Yeah, you've hardened your heart. Now tenderize it. He just gave us a word this morning to help. T- Come on, make us sensitive again. Ba- get back. There's some areas maybe you, you've hardened your heart to God, and you don't even feel convicted in those areas anymore. You don't even see what's wrong with it anymore. But today, his word has gone through that hard callus that you've allowed to develop there. Receive it. Receive it. Let the callus be removed. Become tender. Become sensitive to God again. Amen. Let him work in you again. Let him remind you of things that he showed you. Uh, uh. Look for the uh. Look for it. Don't, don't shun from it. Don't harden your heart to it. Look for it. I want to line myself up with him. I want to be pleasing to him. I want to be able to receive everything he has for me. Can you say amen? amen. Glory be to God. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for helping us. We're so grateful for the utterance this morning. And we thank you for for showing us these things. Help us, Lord, to become tender before you. Help us to become sensitive to you. Help us to yield to you and be willing to lay aside anything that gets between us and you. We don't want to have any of our affections wrapped up in things that hinder us from receiving from you, Father. We are here this morning because we're serious. We're serious. We're not playing church. We're serious. And we receive this word this morning. So we ask you, Father God, right now, for forgiveness, for cleansing, for a renewing, for a softening and a tenderizing of our hearts right now. And we thank you for a washing and a cleansing this morning as we receive your word. Oh, thank you, Father. Uh, let's say this to the Lord from all, with all your heart. Say, Almighty God, thank you for Jesus. I believe he came and he took all my sinfulness upon himself. Everything satanic, everything evil, he took upon himself so I could be free of it. I want to be free of it. I want to align myself with your will for my life. I don't want to get out of alignment. Forgive me for wherever 
I've gotten out of alignment. Forgive me for wherever I've hardened my heart to you. I humble myself before you. I repent. I turn. And I'll keep turning. And I'll keep following you. And I thank you. Hallelujah. Shall we shout, victory is mine. Because Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. You know, it's an amazing thing how addictive things can become to us. It's amazing how people can be addicted to everything from eating to relationships to entertainment to hobbies to just about anything. And the reason is because there are evil spirits that are working behind the scenes, behind the creation, that are trying to compel mankind to worship the creation, to set the creation above God. And so we're learning in this series how to rule over things and not be ruled by them. That is so important to learn how to live a life that's free of idolatry. When we have no idols in our life, when we lift nothing up above God in our life, then the devil has no place in our life. And so this is a very important subject, something we really have to pay special attention to and get our faith built up so we can go through this life living in perfect victory. To help you do it, I've put together a three CD teaching series called Living Free of Idolatry. And I encourage you to contact our ministry by going to our website at lofbc.org or you could call the number on the screen and contact us so that we can ship this out to you and you can just listen to this teaching. Uh, you know, when you receive CDs from us, they're unedited. And so you're able to get a whole lot more on the subject that I'm teaching than you get in the broadcast because, you know, we only have a limited amount of time for our broadcast, so we have to edit some things out. So, but when you get the CD, you get the entire teaching. So I encourage you to contact our ministry and allow us to get in your hands living free of idolatry so that you can enjoy the victory that God has for you through Jesus Christ. For a CD or DVD of today's message, write to us at Life of Faith Bible Church, 14200 Spiegel Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299. Or call 1-888-542-2555. You can also visit us online at lofbc.org. The Living the Life broadcast is sponsored by the faithful financial gifts of its viewers.